Hello, my name is Richard. Today, I will be doing my week 5 video for Coursera on an introduction to interactive programming in Python. Before I even say anything more, I would like to dedicate this video to my newborn cousin, Ian, and I would like to give him a quick note. Welcome to the world, Ian. Happy birthday. Love, Richard. And so... If you are watching this and not from Coursera or even an introduction to interactive programming in Python, you're just seeing this from a referral or an email or even YouTube, this Coursera is a online college course program where everything is free. Universities sign up to be a part of Coursera and their, t their professors, I should say, generally give free classes, entire classes, and they supply quizzes, video lectures, everything that a practically a class needs. The only thing is Coursera doesn't actually give real college credit, though they are college courses. So that's the only downside to Coursera. This is a relatively short video. I'm just going to go over every single part of a dictionary and just cover barely mouse input. So what is the definition of a dictionary today? A dictionary is, and before I even answer that question, try and answer that in your head. What is a dictionary? And I'll give you a quick five seconds to think about it. One, two, three, four, five. All right, time's up. Now, to find out the definition of a dictionary, let's go to a dictionary and search dictionary. Now, dictionary.com is good, and I realize I clicked on dictionary.com. Merriam-Webster is more uh, acclaimed and actually more reliable. So, let's try it. What do we want to search? We want to search the key, in Python terms, the key of dictionary. So, let's call it dictionary. Dictionary, a reference source in print or electronic form containing words usually alphabetically arranged along with information about their forms, pronunciations, functions, etymologies, meanings, and syntactical and idiomatic uses. And I'm not going to read all the others. And to sum that up, it's a book of words used to find definitions. Easy as that. I don't know why they had all the stuff, but I guess those are all the additives of a dictionary. If you watched the dictionary video, which you should very quickly before even watching this video, call, uh, not call, you don't need to call anybody, <laughs> call the uh, dictionary type. So, to do that, you need a variable. And the closest variable I can find is D. It's short, quick, easy to use. Alright, D equals, and you need the weird looking bracket thing, uh, right above usually the square brackets on your keyboard and that's the start of a dictionary now Python knows that's the start of a dictionary and it's going to get ready to define keys and values let's try dictionary first so dictionary dick and remember we need a string type dick show near e and then what do we want we need the colon it's like an equal sign so colon and let's just use my translated term a lot better a book of words used to find definitions and now let's end it with another bracket and see what happens when we print d it has the square brackets it has the term dictionary so this is the key i was talking about which represents the word that you're entering into Merriam-Webster a book of words used to find definitions now we know that lists call things inside lists using indexes so d0 d1 d2 in square brackets dictionaries call it similarly except for the fact that the keys are the indexes the values the things returned so let's try dictionary so this is the correct way to call something from a dictionary you print it because Although in Python idle, you don't need to print it. It just does it automatically. But in Code Sculptor, print D, so you need the name of the dictionary, the square brackets commonly used in list notation, and dictionary, which will call the K 
key dictionary. A book of words used to find definitions. Okay, that's technically what we just put in there. Now, let's try and put in programming. So this is, we were going to do two things in the dictionary. And of course, regular dictionaries have hundreds of words, thousands of words in it, so this is nothing. So you have the comma, that separates a key and a value, and now Python knows that you're going to have to put another key and another value. What's a substitutable thing to put into here? I mean, not substitutable, a suitable thing. And let's try programming. And we can just use that handy Merriam-Webster and put in programming and see what it returns. It returns the planning, scheduling, or performing of a program. The planning, scheduling, or performing of a program. Now let's copy and paste that. Programming, and it colons, you need the string notation, and then the ending of the dictionary. And that's all there is to making a double dictionary, or just a regular dictionary. And let's print it. A book of words to find definitions. Now let's try programming. And let's run it. The planning, scheduling, or performing of a program. The reason I did not uh, supply you with a Code Sculptor uh, link is because we don't really need it. We're just going over the basics of a dictionary. The programming. So, what happens? Now, we know that lists. You call something outside of a list, len minus one, and it will return an index error what do you think would happen if we call something in a dictionary that is not inside the dictionary now I'll give you an extra five seconds to think about that so it's gonna be 10 seconds and while I'm doing that I'm just gonna just count off so 10 9 now the question is what would happen while if you called something outside of a dictionary 3 2 one. And if you watch the video on dictionaries, you already know this is a dead ringer. The teachers always talked about this. It will create a new value, believe it or not. So let's try it. Let's try and call something not inside of dictionary or D. Let's try thesaurus. And we need the string of it because it's not a variable name. Thesaurus. And what would happen if we equaled it? No, if we equaled this. So we're calling something out of it, and we're equaling it to what? We're going to equal it to, and now let's search it, thesaurus. A book of words or information about a particular field or set of concepts, especially a book of words and their synonyms. A book of words and their synonyms. A book of words and their synonyms. Now let's see what happens. Will we return an error? So this is where your guess comes in. Let's print thesaurus. Believe it or not, it returns a book of words and their synonyms. A book of words and their synonyms. Exactly what I put in. So it does not call index errors based on it. what's in the dictionary already. It just creates a new thing in the dictionary. Now, look in the docs of Code Sculptor, and you can open a new window for this. And I'm just going to stay here for another five seconds and try to very find. I mean, try to very fastly find how to uh, make a thing in the dictionary disappear. And instead of waiting for you, I'm just going to go ahead and show you. But you can pause the video and go ahead and try to find it yourself. So it's like your own kind of quest. Let's get rid of this. Now, the key word is del. Del stands for delete. D, you need to call the name of the dictionary. You need the weird square bracket. Not the weird square bracket, just the regular square bracket and you're gonna call the key so you can't delete the value but you could delete the key so D dictionary and then just close it off with brackets and let's run it now let's call D 
after this. Print G. Programming. The planning schedule or performing a program. Thesaurus. A book of words and their synonyms. And that's it. That's the del function. It deletes anything in the dictionary. And now that we're practically done with dictionaries, let's quickly go to the docs together and search mouse. And that would be in the control object, mouse input. So, position is a tuple. Tuples are immutable, so don't try to change anything in tuple. So, the handler for a mouse thing would be to have a position, and then you can control that position with if statements, else statements, else statements, likewise. Supposedly, I would need to have more in this video, because I only covered two things, but those are the most important things, and believe it or not, you don't need to know much about these. List methods. It's append, extend, uh, everything in the docs. Those actually explain themselves. Examples are just a bunch of lists that the teachers put together, <laughs> try to teach us with them. <laughs> and uh, dictionaries, I already went over. Images. Now, I already told you at the beginning of the video, I don't know much about images. Wait a minute. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, oh, I don't even know if I actually said anything about images at the beginning of the video. Huh. I guess that's something for you to remember. <laughs> programming tips. Speaking of programming tips, Professor or Mr. or Dr. Greiner, uh, sorry for the teachers. My greatest apologies. If I've been messing up, Professor, Mr. Doctor, I'm really sorry. I haven't, I've been too lazy to actually look at your true title, so I'm very sorry for that. And those of you who are watching my video right now, uh, I wish you the very utmost good luck on your memory project. I actually have no idea where to start. So I think it's probably going to be one of the hardest that we've done. And remember to comment, like, rate anywhere, Coursera or YouTube. Remember, I absolutely love um, my comments and my viewers Thank you so much for liking and commenting. And if you hadn't known already, in my week four video postings, I had a, a piano interlude that I did for my uh, own video. So it's a comment under the video, and I will post it on this video as well. So enjoy that if you want to. And that's basically it. I know this was supposed to be a short video, and it ended up running off into space. But that's the fun of video making and programming you can just do it for so many times straight and you won't even notice for example the stopwatch i went on for five hours doing it and i never even realized that all the time passed so thank you very much again for watching the video and i hope you enjoyed it goodbye <laughs>